How's it going everyone? Welcome back to our fighting game. In this lecture, we're going to be adding in our animation state. Now this is a hugely important lecture because once we're done with this, we can really start to see the game take shape. So here's what we're going to do first. The first thing is we're going to import all of our player animations. So I'm going to unlock our entities layer. I'm going to double click on our player. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this frame altogether. Oh, well, okay, it doesn't want to let me do that. That's fine. I'm going to right click on our animation frames and import from files. And now I must navigate to my files because my desktop is inherently messy. So let me find those files real fast. And once I do that, we will be on our way. Here they are. Okay, cool. So now I'm in our fighting game assets. And what I need to do is I need to go to our character and I need to go to our idle and I'm going to take all of these just by selecting them and hit open. So I'm going to get rid of the first frame since it, even though it was our idle frame, but now we actually have our idle animation. But you'll notice here that our origin point is all messed up. So let's do that and let's check our collision as well. So we're going to say quick assign to the bottom and go to our, our uh, collision here. And there we go. It's working perfectly fine now. Cool. So let's actually rename this animation because that's what we need to do. And we need to give it the ID prefix. Remember the ID prefix is extremely important and this is the reason why. And we're gonna call this ID idle in all caps. So what we're going to do next is we're gonna add another animation. I'm gonna call this our ID walk. Then I'm going to add another one for our ID attack. And let's see what else I need to add. I need to add our combos, but I think we're gonna wait for that one. Right now we can just do the walk and attack. So I'm in the walk animation and you can't really see what's going on here. So I'm gonna import frames from files and I'm gonna explain our actual reason behind the ID in a second. I selected one, I, hold, I held down shift and I clicked on seven and then I opened all of them. It's gonna give us a blank frame for zero. So I'm gonna delete that and there we go. There's our walking animation. So let me double check our collision polygons, which are all pretty good. And let's go to our origin point. Let's set that to the bottom and let's right click and apply to whole animation. There we go. So now we have our walk all set up and ready to go. Everything looks pretty good there. Let's go to our attack and let's do the same thing. Let's import frames from files. Let's go to our character. Let's go to our attack one through four and let's hit open. Let's delete frame zero. And let's do the same thing, check our collision polygon. It's good. Let's go to our origin point and let's go to quick assign and let's go to the bottom. Now let's right click and apply to whole animation. Cool. So now our origin point should be everywhere. Now this is actually one of the exceptions where you don't want it to be on the bottom for every single frame. And here's the reason why. You'll see here when I go down or when the player actually swings his sword down here that his feet move and the whole point of putting it on the bottom is for his feet to be right underneath the actual or at least close to the actual origin point see right here it doesn't really matter uh oh wait this frame got off all of these frames are are off let me fix that but you can see here that let me hit that bottom quick uh, apply the whole animations there we go there it goes but you can see that it's very close if we go to id walk it's extremely close right underneath his feet. And if we go to the attack, at least on the first frame it's close, but on the second frame it's off. So for this to look normal, we have to guess where it is right in between the feet here. And let's do that for this as well, because otherwise it'll actually move the player back and we don't want that as at all. So there we go. Now that's all set up and ready to go. And our collision polygons are working perfectly. Okay. So we have three basic animations set up for our player now, but now we need our actual animation event. We need our animation state. So let's go to our player. Let's go to our states. We're going to right click, add event sheet, and call this our animation state, just like that. Now in our animation state, what we need to do is we need to make an every tick. So every single frame needs to be checked for this one. So we're going to type in every tick. And what's going to happen is we're going to be setting the animation dynamically. To do this, we're going to go to our entities, find our player, and we're going to add an instance variable called our player state. And we are going to make this type text. And we don't need to give it an initial value and you don't have to give it a description. So that's what we're going to make it. Now, 
Now that we have that, what we're going to do is we're going to say in the every tick, go to our player, entities, player, object, player, and set the animation. So again, that's right here under animation, set the animation. What we're going to set it to, you see how it accepts a string format. So we could technically type in ID idle, just like that. That works perfectly fine. And in some instances, I have to override it and do that because it might not call it that way. But for the most part, I'm trying to call it dynamically. So I'm just going to have the ID underscore and the object player dot player state. And that's what's going to grab. So we're grabbing our player and we're using the dot to grab our instance variable player state. So now whatever our player state equals, it'll equal ID underscore idle or whatever it is. So let's hit OK. Cool, so now that we have our animation state, let's go to step two, which is the second most important, obviously. And what we're going to do is we're gonna group this together. We're gonna to take this event, and we're gonna hit G on the keyboard, and we're gonna call this our master player animator. And the reason is, we want to be able to toggle this on and off. And I'll explain in a second here, as I give it a description of this line of code controls the animation state for the player. So it's important that we have this in a group because we can turn this on and off. In case we do need to force something or this doesn't always uh, go the way we need it to, we can always disable and enable. I know for one of the combos, I use it to disable and enable, and you'll see that later on because it's you want to make sure that the animation, especially for a melee attack, is playing. You don't want it to be messed up because this is setting the animation to whatever the state is every single second. So it can be a little bit tricky, but it's not that complicated in the long run, especially if we are using it with a group. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot and I'll see you in the next one.